This is All India Radio. In the program Money Talk, now we bring you a discussion on Global Biofuel Alliance, a key priority under India's G20 presidency. The participants are Utpal Bhaskar, energy expert, and S. Rangabhashyam, AIR correspondent. Mr. Utpal Bhaskar, the Minister for Petroleum and Natural Gas, declared Global Biofuel Alliance is going to be one of the priorities under India's G20 presidency. Just for the benefit uh, of our listeners, tell us what exactly biofuel is. So when you look at biofuel, right now what we are looking at India is primarily ethanol, and that's the reason why this ethanol blending program, which has gained traction, it has done very well in our country. So biofuels are generally divided into three categories. So there is a first generation biofuel, which is the biofuel produced from sugar, starch, corn, wheat, broken rice, and others. Then there is a second generation biofuel, also popularly referred to as a 2G biofuel, which is produced from non-food biomass such as plant materials and animal waste. And then there comes the, the third generation biofuel, which is a fuel produced from microorganisms such as bacteria and algae. The one that Mr. Puri has talked about will be a game changer, given that all the three countries, Brazil, India, United States, Apart from them being part of the G20, they're the largest cultivators as well, given huge parts of the landmass under agriculture. Interestingly also, from a G20's perspective, because the other large biofuel producers are Argentina, Indonesia and China, they're also part of G20. So absolutely, it will be a shot in the arm, not only for G20, for the global energy security as well. We have been talking about, you know, biofuels and blending of ethanol in petroleum for the last couple of years. Is there a perceptible change in the demand for normal petroleum products like petrol and diesel as such because of increased usage of ethanol? Right now, if you look at the way that this entire trajectory has progressed, the very reason that the Prime Minister launched this E20 fuel for 84 retail outlets of state-owned oil marketing companies in 11 states and union territories comes on in the backdrop of India working and achieving those targets on the 20% blend of ethanol with petrol. Now, the government, obviously, given the kind of response that has been seen, the government plans to achieve a complete 20% blending of ethanol by 2025. Coming back to your question about what kind of a receptiveness has there been on the side of the consumers. That's the, in fact, from the time that the ethanol blending program and the biofuels program, so to speak, has started, obviously the consumer today, and not only it's the government, at the end of the day, any technology or any such huge shift, because we are talking about a way that we are absolutely thinking about our way of living as well, happened when the consumers became a part of the process. Now, a lot of consumers today are aware about and climate change is a reality. We cannot wish it away. There have been all kind of extreme climate events as well. So, usage of ethanol in this country has resulted in the reduction of 318 lakh metric tons of carbon dioxide emissions and also the forex savings of 54,000 crore. Now, there has been the ethanol blending program that one of the metrics to also measure the success of it would be that apart from the payments which have been made towards ethanol supplies, which has gone up to around 81,800 crore till 2022, and the forex saved as well. The demand is growing up, so much so that the projections are that it will reach 10.16 billion liters by 2025, the India's ethanol demand. So that very well tells us a story. So the story might now sound the way a like large hydrocarbon find or a large gas find or oil find happens. But this is a silent revolution which is happening in this country. At the end of the day, as a user, if there is something like this available, which is obviously it's going to increase your carbon footprint, also then helps the government save forex. Ultimately, at the end of the day, it all comes down to economics. If we are less dependent upon a fuel, which is 85% of our oil needs are imported, yeah. and mind you, Brent prices today are $86.39 per barrel. So that obviously gives you a certain amount of respite from the these exigencies, both in terms of price and supply. Mr. Bhaskar, uh, let's also discuss about uh, the issues raised by critics. They say that, you know, using food, like in some of the countries, maize is predominantly used, or as you said, you know, even rice and paddy. They say that could possibly threaten the food security of the world. See, this is a very complex subject. So obviously, I'm not an agri-economist. I would not claim any uh, credence to that. But what I would like to put out there would be, and for listeners, See, technology evolves. So, obviously, the first generation biofuels came from sugar and starch and 
that's the reason brazil and the sugarcane production and stuff the second generation is from non food biomass plant materials and animal waste the third generation is from microorganisms such as bacteria and algae so obviously as the technology evolves you will get into things which have no play whatsoever on your economy coming back to the earlier point this debate the way that it is being framed one needs to be very conscious of the fact there is something called a big oil there is something called a big auto and there are other kind of large powers at play there are economies purely dependent upon hydrocarbon today so some of the largest economies in west asia there is no hydrocarbon in the mix i don't know what other industry would they resort to support their population that's the reason why you will see a lot of countries in west asia today are very consciously working towards moving away from hydrocarbon as the primary revenue earner India has set up this very ambitious target of becoming a net zero economy by 2070. Anything that helps us in that direction should be welcomed. Mr. Bhaskar, we have been talking about alternatives to crude oil, and crude oil we all know that India, you know, imports some 75, 80 percent of its requirement. and we also understand that uh, there is a cartel globally by the name opec or opec plus do you think uh, the member countries of opec and opec plus would sit by the sidelines and watch don't you think they would also react and see to it that this transition is not quicker means the delay would be to their advantage so they would try and delay the entire process isn't it it's a very interesting question that you've asked while i claiming no expert on be on opec but let me put this out so in fact mint was the first to report on the 17th of september that india is looking at creating this alliance of biofuel producing countries when we take up the g20 presidency which happened in december now look at the way that this entire playbook has been evolved on one hand you have opec and opec plus when every time they talk about reducing or cutting down production there is a spike in crude oil prices now india for a long time has been championing for the rights of the global south as well and there's something that we particularly suffer from we suffer from something called an asian premium as well so we need to pay all that that hasn't got any economic logic why india should pay premium on the supplies despite the fact that we are the one of the largest importers of oil in fact we are the third largest importer of oil in the world now obviously some for a primary revenue earner for opec and opec plus countries oil is not only purely tool of economic prosperity or negotiation it all has also evolved over a period of time as a strategic tool it basically used as a rod as and when the grouping so decides we have seen the oil shocks of yesterday years we have seen when oil prices went up to this 147 dollar and 27 cents in july 2008 india has been asking for a just price for a long time see it also doesn't work very well in the favor of this oil producing country if you price your oil so high there will be no taker for that oil we are all already living in this uh, era of hyper inflation thankfully india has been able to tame inflation to a certain extent but this is being playing out in other western economies as well it's not as if they are out of they are basically in a very hunky dory situation so yes yeah, something like this and this is the largest energy transition of the scale which is happening anywhere in the world apart from biofuel green hydrogen that's something that india has we have come up with a national green hydrogen mission finance minister also spoke about it in his budget speech as well all of this and given that we plan to do 500 gigawatts of green all of this at some level will reduce our dependence on external sources of energy which in my mind will absolutely add more heft to india's position at the global high table uh, mr bhaskar you follow the energy sector so closely would you like to hazard a guess as to by when you know there could be a perceptible reduction in crude oil demand because we see that on one hand electric vehicles are becoming popular we are talking about hydrogen we are talking about green hydrogen we are talking about blending of uh, ethanol and biofuels into a mainstream you know petrol and diesel so because of that uh, you know at one point in time they will kind of overtake the basic fuel that is the crude oil so do you want to hazard a guess by when you know uh, maybe in okay. the next 10 years 15 years 20 years when will that happen that demand and for crude oil in our country and also maybe worldwide starts going down i would not hazard a guess i'm not sure <laughs> anyone who could do that uh, obviously we have the goldmans of the world who have been talking about a 200 dollar oil price for a while now but i'm sure when you look at uh, we are talking your base in new delhi obviously the capital city of the country when you look around you will see this huge push for green mobility which is happening 
Yes. So for example, if you look at the number of EVs that are electric vehicles that are being registered in this country, the numbers have gone up. I'm not only talking about the metros now. I would like to take this to also to tier three cities as well. Now we have seen the discovery of lithium in our own country. So ultimately, and I'm not saying that lithium ion is the future. There will obviously, as technology progresses, there will be other technologies that will come into play. But at the end of it, the moment internal combustion engine prices and EV prices are at par. In fact, there are some segments where there are some of the automobile manufacturers have already announced some very fancy pricing as well. And this is actually playing out more and more. When you look out, you'll find there will be vehicles with this green number plate. The moment green hydrogen comes into play, that even there there will be a significant amount of dependency on all external sources of energy. And when we say energy, energy is not only purely oil. There is also a huge amount of gas that India imports. And we saw that the kind of a scare that we got last year, where the contracted supplies were gale. Gale is a state-owned company. The contracted supplies they were not being met because there's already, mind you, there's a war happening in Ukraine right now. At the end of the day, they will look at everything through their own prism. India is also one of the largest refiners in the world right now. Interestingly, and that amuses me to no end. While a lot of these uh, developed economies, including US and the EU, have been summarizing us from the pulpit. For reducing the usage of Russian oil, a lot of discounted Russian oil comes to India, gets processed, and then gets transported to feed into the demands of EU and US. We are talking about the Global Biofuel Alliance. We also understand that the International Solar Alliance has been kind of a you know runaway success under the initiative taken by India under the leadership of Prime Minister Shri Narendra Modi. Similarly, this alliance, the Global Biofuel Alliance, as of now it's only three countries: Brazil, India, and US. Uh, do you think uh, in times ahead other countries will join in? There will be standardization. There will be rules set for trading in biofuels and all the paraphernalia. Yeah, in fact, you mentioned International Solar Alliance. The next logical step that IIA has been seeing, and there's a lot of traction there as well. One sun, one world, one grid. The global grid. So that is a natural progression in, of, in the scheme of things. So US is the largest energy consumer in the world. India is the third largest. Then you have a Brazil. In fact, if you remember, there was a time when India had actually taken the cause of getting, if you may use the word, so-called compact of the consuming nation, and that the compact was to happen between an India, a China, a Japan, and a South Korea, the largest energy consuming economies in the world, to then kind of form a consumer block and then try to. Have a good deal with an OPEC, which is a producer block at the end of the day. Obviously, as more and more countries come together, but in fact, the early indicators are very heartening. So, the moment you have these large consuming countries becoming a part of it, and then what happens is that there will be a trade in global biofuels. So, if these large economies they involve themselves in this ethanol project or the biofuel alliance, this is bound to happen. When we talk about uh, biofuel, it's predominantly passenger cars and vehicles which are using currently blended fuel and all. But don't you think other major sectors like say aviation and also uh, shipping has to kind of adapt to biofuels? Maybe you know technologically their engines have to be retuned or calibrated, and they also you know start using biofuels as such. In fact, it's a very interesting question. Generally, when we talk about new technologies, obviously every new technology will come with its own set of concerns. There will be initially some teething trouble. But interestingly, India has taken a leap forward here. So, in fact, India is looking at. You talked about ships. Right now, there is a plan which is in the works to run ships 100% on green energy. Mm-hmm. That will involve a hybrid energy model. So, basically, solar, sea water, wind, and hydrogen. So, apart from surface mobility, that's what you were talking about. The cars. There's a huge host of applications across sectors. Mr. Utpal Bhaskar, thank you so much for joining us on the program. Thank you for having me. You are listening to a discussion on Global Biofuel Alliance, a key priority under India's G20 presidency. The participants were Utpal Bhaskar, energy expert, and S. Rangabhasyam, AIA correspondent. This program was produced and presented by the News Services Division of All India Radio. You can listen to it on our mobile app News on AIR. This program is also available on our YouTube channel News on AIR Official. You may email your opinion about this program at airnsdtalks@gmail.com.